Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Those of you who are on Zoom, I invite you at this time to meet, mute until uh, you are encouraged to, to share and worship. We are now live on Facebook as well as recording to the cloud. We gather in the name of God, the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer of the earth and all of the earth's creatures. Praise be to the Holy Trinity. God is sound of life, creator of the universe, source of all life, whom the angels sing, wondrous light of all mysteries, known or unknown to humankind, and life that lives in all. That's a quotation from the 13th century by the great mystic Hildegard of Bingen. I greet you each friend in the name of Jesus, born of Mary, child of Joseph, grandchild of Heli, who is the 40th great grandchild of David, child of Jesse, grandchild of Ruth and Boaz, who was by Rahab then Tamar, the seventh grandson of Judah, child of Jacob, child of Rebekah and Isaac, child of Sarah and Abraham, descendant of Noah, great-grandchild of Enoch, who walked with God, the fourth great-grandchild of Eve and Adam, human children of the earth and creator. And who are each of you, my friends? Take just a moment and reflect on your ancestors. What is the meaning of your name? long lineage that brought you to this place in life. We gather in the name of the one born in Bethlehem who lived as a refugee in Egypt and was raised in Nazareth near the Sea of Galilee that feeds the Jordan River. We welcome you from your home. Where is home for you? Take a moment to reflect on the places of your origin your local ecology, how would you describe home? Maybe just take a moment if you'd like to unmute and call out a word that helps us get a picture of home for you. Yes, Craig. Comfort. Comfort. Yeah. Comfort. Others. With Brad. With Brad. Nice. Uh, with, with Jim. Home is with uh, Jim. Yeah. Home is where you hang your heart. Thank you, Roseanne. Brothers and sisters. Mm. A tender forest. Nice. On me. Whoever said that, say that again. We, we missed it. The trees all around me. Mm. Thank you, Sarah Lou. Comfort and protection. Yes, baby. Well, thank you for helping us increase our picture of home. We've got in the chat community. Amen. From the places we call home, we are gathered in the one God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, of each creature in the earth, our common home. I'm going to uh, share screen. Uh, Joni has offered a recording of an old uh, Mennonite hymn, Each Little Flower That Opens.
Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings. God made their glowing colors, God made their tiny wings. The purple-headed mountain, the river running by, the sunset and the morning that brightens up the sky. Yes, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, and all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. The cold wind in the winter, the pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruits in the garden, God made them every one. He gave us eyes to see them and lips that we might tell. How great is God Almighty, who has made all things well. Yes, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. And all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Thank you, Joni. We come to our time of celebrations and prayer concerns. I want to share a couple and then uh, invite you to share either by unmuting uh, and, and or um, sharing in the chat function. On this uh, Labor Day weekend, we pray for all workers. Pray for all workers uh, so that everyone who labors might have a living wage and a safe workplace and a right to organize and a day of rest. We are uh, mindful of uh, Anna Tam Panna, who is presenting at the Wild Goose Festival in Hot Springs, North Carolina this weekend. We pray with um, all of our community and especially those of the Mount Tabor community, all of the students, staff and, and families, everybody in the school district and beyond, also those in Wilmington who uh, are living in the wake of uh, school shootings this week. We pray for voting rights, for women's right to choose in the midst of all of the, all of the stuff that's happening in our in our nation. We pray for uh, Deborah W's uh, brother's family, brother Derek, uh, as they grieve the loss of his daughter, Sydney. We pray for all of those in, who are trying to recover in the wake of Ida these past days. We pray with Charlie N and Lil S and Michelle J who are facing um, medical issues. I'm going to uh, invite you at this point to share celebrations as well as prayer concerns. Pray for uh, Rita W. Carol who's asking for those prayers. Others. Pray for my sister. She had a cornea transplant and it didn't work. So she's having a second one next week. Mm. Yes, prayers for your sister, Jim. I'd like to ask for prayers for my dear friend, Kathy. For Kathy, thank you, Diane. Mm -hmm. Prayers for Philip C. For Philip C, thank you. Prayers for the nurses and the, those helping the doctors um, as the second wave comes and they're exhausted from the first wave. They need lots of love and care and prayers. Absolutely, Carol. Prayers for all medical staff, including those of our health departments who have been trying to respond in this pandemic for so long. I see in the chat, uh, 
Tony asks for prayers in this milestone birthday of my spouse, Gail, grateful for her and her parents' lineage who bears, who has bared, born her. For and Cynthia prays for all in the East suffering from too much water and for those in the city of New Orleans with no electricity and the heat, those in the West suffering from too much fire, especially the displaced and the firefighters, others. Prayers for my Susan and Raleigh. For Susan, thank you, Diane. Praise that my brother Dennis, who has been very ill, uh, is really making a turn, and so things are looking much better for him. For Michael's brother Dennis. A celebration for my daughter Josie, who just moved to New York on Friday with a full time job. Praise and celebration. Yeah. For Josie, thank you. I'm going to invite us to remute as we have a centering moment with um, Carol sharing uh, musically uh, centering time. This song has a refrain where God is calling us to come home come home. And I know in the folk tradition, that means leave your earthly body and come to another place called heaven. But for thousands of years, the mystics have been telling us that God has a home within us here, in these mortal bodies too, that God dwells in us and with us. You remember that um, Teresa of Avila invited us to come live in our interior castle, or the way I prefer it in my interior cabin, it's warmer there. And you may not know um, Elizabeth of the Trinity in the 1800s, and she sets our thinking right. Not that God is in heaven, that God's the small one and heaven is big. But she said, I have found my heaven on earth. For heaven is in God, and God is in my soul. Heaven is in God, and God is in my soul. And in our modern times, Macrina Vedekar, whose name means little great one, come home. Macrina Vedekar invites us into listening to God praying to us begging us, little great one, come closer. Little great one, I kept calling out, come closer. Come home to the self I keep loving. Come home to the self that you are. Little great one, God kept calling, come closer. Little great one, little great one, come home. So listen in that way for God singing a lullaby to you, inviting you to come into your deepest self for God lives there as well. Mm-hmm. 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 
to my calling. Come home, you know. Thank you, Carol. We seek always to come home to the Holy Presence. I invite you to join in the prayer Jesus taught in the language and tradition of your choice. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. But you to unmute, maybe share your, your screen. I mean, share your face on the screen for our time of uh, passing the peace. Peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace to 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 everyone. Peace Peace to all. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah. You can mute us and take it. <clears throat> the Spirit's peace abide with you in breath and blood and movement in stillness in relationship. Amen. We put out... Um, a week ago, an invitation for you to spend some time uh, using a practice called the Earth Examine. And then over these next couple of Sundays, especially, I'm still looking for somebody for September 19th and September 24th to share just a word about an experience you've had or are having in the natural world. So I'm going to uh, invite somebody who's been joining us for the last 19 months from the uh, Upper Great Lakes, uh, Pat Schaum, to share. Good morning, everyone. Um, some of you know that in April, I sold our home in Wisconsin and moved to Grand Rapids, Michigan. I purchased an apartment in a senior community and one of the things that I've wanted to do that's been on my bucket list is to start a butterfly garden. And I found two other ladies that are in this building who were also interested in this. And so we asked permission to have an area to do our garden. 
and we got the, we worked the garden. We uh, put in the flowers and the herbs and everything that would attract monarch butterflies. We also had to include milkweed because this is what the monarchs need to lay their eggs. So um, we put in our garden and then we had to wait two anxious months. And finally, about the middle to the end of June, we saw monarch butterflies. And you don't know how excited we were to see those monarch butterflies and lay their eggs underneath the leaves of the milkweed. So once we had eggs on the milkweed, we decided to bring some of the eggs into our apartment. We put some in our, our um, religious library and some we um, took into our individual apartments. And I would invite people in to see the various stages uh, of the, the butterfly, the egg stage, then the larva stage, then the pupil stage, and then the adult butterfly. So I had two eggs in my apartment and I, these were here for about a month and a half. And um, they became, I watched this little white dot of an egg become a tiny caterpillar. And then that caterpillar grew to about two and two thirds inches. And ladies would come in, the men weren't that interested, but the ladies would come in and see the various stages of the butterfly. I named my two caterpillars Morgan and Taylor because I didn't know what sex they were, and so we had to so we had to use a name that would work for male or female. Um, and the residents were really fascinated and excited to see this. They a lot of them had not any idea about the various stages that they go through, and so they were coming and always asking when I'd see them. How are your butterflies doing and what are they doing? So I had these two caterpillars and one day I had to go downstairs to, we had some of the butterflies in um, the, the, their container in our lobby for people to see. And so I was monitoring these butterflies uh, that the, the people wouldn't touch, but they could see them coming out of the chrysalis and so on. And while I was gone, my caterpillar Morgan escaped. When I came back, I looked and searched for two days for that caterpillar. And I decided either it was a chrysalis somewhere and in, in two weeks I'd have a butterfly flying in my apartment or that it would be dead. Well, about four days later, um, I was decided to do wash my bedding. And lo and behold, underneath the, my duvet cover on the side where I wasn't sleeping, here was the chrysalis form from Morgan. Now, what do I do? I called the other two ladies I worked with. We have never heard of that. What do you, what should I do? So I went to my sewing cabinet and pulled out silk thread and a corsage needle. Now don't ask me why I picked those two. And then I went back to the duvet and, and this butterfly is, or this chrysalis is attached by a tiny, thin, short black thread. And I worked and worked to try to get that thread loose. God really knows what he's doing because that was so strong. And I finally released it took the silk thread and made a loop around that little black thread of the chrysalis, put a corsage needle through it, and then went to the milkweed and underneath the milkweed where the vein is of the milkweed, I threaded the corsage needle and that caterpillar or that chrysalis was there for um, two weeks. Uh, eventually after two weeks, Morgan was made the was the chrysalis and and I knew it was going to it came out when it becomes in in the chrysalis for two weeks and then it gets kind of dark and you can actually see the the wings of the butterfly the different colors and um so I had ladies in and it I let once it came out of the chrysalis I let it for an hour and a half to let the wings dry. And I took it out to my balcony and 
got it out of the container and, and put it on the hands of the different ladies. We moved it from one to the other. And they talked to these butterfly, this butterfly like it was a human baby. It, it was the most exciting and thrilling thing. And they were so happy to hold this butterfly in their hands. And then I put it on a flower and released it. Well, then Taylor the next day broke out of the chrysalis and I had people in again. We went out on the balcony and, and um, I let each one hold it. We took pictures and I had have pictures made to give to them. And then um, when they left, I took Taylor and put it on a plant, on a flower. Taylor immediately flew to my ankle crawled all the way up my leg, up my body, and sat on my cheek. I took my finger, removed it from my cheek, put it on the flower, back to my ankle, up my leg, up my body, on my cheek. And this kept happening. So finally, I put it on the plant and forced myself to go into my apartment so that it could release itself and fly away. It stayed on that plant for about four hours. It moved around to the railing and back on the plant and finally flew away. And that was hard to see, but it needed to fly on and, and uh, enjoy the three weeks that a monarch butterfly only lives for about three weeks. A female butterfly, and both of my butterflies ended up being females. I thought for sure that Morgan was a male because it gave me so much trouble, but it was a female. Um, it had two black spots. If it's a male, there's two black spots on its hind wings. So the butterfly lays, once it mates, it, it lays about 300 eggs. And most of the eggs in the caterpillars are then eaten by predators. Only about 2% of the monarch butterflies survive. But I really appreciate you allowing me to tell me your, you my story about God's wonder of nature. Thanks for sharing that story. We've got a couple of scripture to share together today. The first is from the Gospel of Mark. I'm going to read from the Common English Bible, the seventh chapter. Uh, this is comes right on the heels of um, uh, the story that many of us are familiar with, with Jesus' encounter with the Syrophoenician woman who is just asking for healing of, of her daughter. And Jesus says some harsh words for her, but uh, she she kind of responds in a way that transforms his heart. So we pick up with verse 31. After leaving the region of Tyre, Jesus went through Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee through the region of the 10 cities. And some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly speak. They begged him, place your hand on this man for healing. Jesus took the man away from the crowd by himself and put his finger in the man's ears. Then he spit and he touched the man's tongue. And looking into heaven, Jesus sighed deeply and said, Afafatha, which means open up. At once the man's ears opened, his twisted tongue was released and he began to speak clearly. Jesus gave the strict orders not to tell anyone, but the more he tried to silence them, the more eagerly they shared the news. People were overcome with wonder, saying, this one does everything well. This one even makes the deaf to hear and give speech to those who cannot speak. And from the, from the little sayings in the book of Proverbs, we read a couple of selections from the 22nd chapter, also from the Common English Bible, a good reputation is better than much wealth. High esteem is better than silver and gold. The rich and poor have in common. The sovereign made them both. Don't steal from the poor because they are poor. Don't oppress the needy in the gate. 
the sovereign will take up their case and press the life out of those who oppress them. This is what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. Okay, God, cosmos, sacred energy, karma, you have our attention. Now what? We're experiencing this convergence of upending, disturbing experiences all at once. You've got our attention. Now what? What many theorized for the years gone by as a great turning, a tipping point, a 500 year rummage sale of ideas is now surrounding us. It's not a theory, it's a scary whirlwind we are attempting to live through one day at a time. Some days I suspect we are all simply numb, lugubrious, blue. Other days we just feel like raging, but we don't know how that would be productive. And then some days we might still twirl in a spurt of mania, thinking if we do this and if we do that and we do that, that will at least put our fingers in the dike. My dear companions on this journey, take a deep breath. Take a sigh. Lower your shoulders. I say take, uh, make sure your video is on and look at each other, smile at each other in these frames in an act of saying, yes, I get it. I get it. And you are beloved. Take, just take a moment and 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 soak in one another's faces. Ah, how much we need each other in these times. Thanks for sharing your faces. So holy one, you've got our attention. Now what? The urgency is palpable, almost unbearable sometimes, right? But in all of it, we get to believe new ways are emerging. Most of us are now praying fervently for our children, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, our grand, great grands, and the world they will be facing. And yet each and every one of us can lean into those prayers actively with the wise we have before us. Together, humbly, lovingly. There are no easy or singular answers. The questions tend to spill out of us with our tears. May the questions open us to new ways, more tender and just in the midst of our fears and our discomfort and our anxiety. I'm fond of a quotation used often these days, the times are urgent, so let us slow down. Nigerian psychologist, philosopher, Bayo Akomalafa speaks often about this idea. The times are urgent, so let us slow down. His, he suggests we can't respond in our default modes. We can't respond out of our busyness, our industrial selves, our impulse to believe in scarcity, our atomized way of living, and we can respond in a spirituality of awareness, of knowing every moment is saturated in some ways of, with the thinness between material and spiritual, to ask, what would the mountains think? To put our ears to the ground and listen, to put the vulnerable ones in the center and believe in their wisdom. We're asked, he says, to trouble our problems, to question if we have the, are asking the right questions, to pay close attention to one another's lives, that times are urgent, so let us slow down. Jesus in this story is in foreign territory. He wants some privacy, and yet he's pulled into an encounter with a woman whom by all accounts comes from a culture more health, wealthy and comfortable than the one of the Galileans from where Jesus comes. And she's asking for support. She wants a healing. 
for her daughter and he insults her. She persists with an ingenious wordplay on his insult until he begins to realize his purposes are bigger and more inclusive than he ever thought. He says to the woman for saying that, go see your daughter well. Jesus is opened. He's been asked to slow down and change the way of his listening and his responding. The woman has offered the Son of Man a conversion experience. How about that? So Jesus continues on his journey, taking in that opening, that new wisdom. And he goes to another foreign territory, and he goes through it, and the community again encroaches in on his, his desire for some privacy. And this time they bring somebody who cannot hear or speak very well. And Jesus brings the man away from the crowds and he puts his fingers in his ears and he spits and touches the man's tongue. And Jesus says, be opened. Kind of like I just was, was, must have been what Jesus was saying. Be opened in a language that all around would be known intimately and familially. And then the punchline comes next. Jesus says, don't tell anybody. And they tell the whole world. It's so much bigger, more magnificent than Jesus has control of. And the thing is, it's not just about the physical condition of this man and all of the rest of us, but it's about a rebinding to community, to knowing one another's story, to being, being able to speak our truth. The world is put on notice. God's going to keep speaking in those who cannot speak. When I was a child, I would go for my annual physical and nurse Beatrice would do all of the preliminary screenings before the doctor would come in. She wore crisp whites, white stockings, traditional nursing hat. She smelled like a field of lavender. She would give me a hearing test in the simplest way by pressing firmly with one hand against my one ear. And she'd ask me to repeat the numbers she was saying until it would trail off into a mere whisper. Then she would shift to the other ear and press her fingers firmly into that ear. It was the best part of my doctor's visit, a warm and enfolding sensation of somebody pressing against my ear firmly, but gently. So go ahead and try it. Take your fingers and press them now gently into your ears. I'm telling you today in our sharing of this story together, we are connecting with the luscious physicality of holy love. The Christic loving presence firmly presses in on our ability to hear and is proclaiming in this moment, be opened, be opened, the beloved says, to a new way of hearing, of literally putting our ears to the earth, to the pulse of our neighbor's breath, of our neighbor's heart, to the to the breath of a child rising and falling, to the grief of our own inner scape more fully. In this time of urgency, Holy Love says, I am transforming your sense of listening. I want you to believe that. Yes, respond with urgency, but also slow down because I am transforming you ever more as lovers in creation. Listen for the way the problems might just hold the solutions. Listen for the ways we are different than we were even a month ago. Now I invite you to take your tongue and swirl it around in the may, an amazing antibacterial therapeutic saliva in your mouth. Yes, spit is a miracle, especially for a gingiva. Imagine Christic experience grabbing hold of your tongue. No, not for a mouth cancer screening, but as a sacramental way to affirm your speech out of your most authentic and unfiltered place within you. 
from the bedrock of your shaping stories, unleashing your ability to speak a truth that really scares you, but also excites you. Once we slow down to be open to hear freshly, we might just be tugged to speak truth we've not ever uttered before for the sake of the community. Jesus' saliva is a truth serum. We open to our participation in the new wording of a world in relationship with creation. Yes, in the urgency, there are pry points, blinking to new vistas for us to be able to hear, see, and experience. We know we're supposed to consume less, we're supposed to occupy less, and yet let us help one another to hear the beauty and the richness of a different way rather than do so with a begrudging sense of guilt. Like the woman I read about recently who's been trying to simplify her life, she kept on looking at an engagement ring that sat on her, her bureau as she grieved the loss of that relationship. Seven long years, she would look at that ring and she would grieve until one day she was ready. She posted wanting to give that away on the Buy Nothing Project website. And the first respondent was a young woman with special needs ready to get married, who was just so overjoyed at the possibility of this ring. And they met one another and she passed the ring to the young woman. And they were just so thrilled with that transaction. Giving it away was transformative and healing for both of them. Like many of, in parts of Europe these days who have discovered a four day work week, 32 hours a week, saving 14% of our carbon footprint, having much more family time and life balance, spending less on travel and clothing and childcare. Like the La Viva Campesina movement in Latin America who realized, ah, how do we achieve food sovereignty? One of the most significant ways is to tackle violence against women. Like the indigenous cultures these days across the globe facing deforestation, sea level rise, lack of rainfall, mudslides, who have built their survival on communicating and depending on one another for creative solutions rather than competing for thinning resources. Be open, friends. In the on way, in the urgency, in the panic, the spirit sometimes encourages us to go into spiritual slow-mo so we can hear, so we can experience that thinness. A thinness that might come in a conversation with a neighbor, transforming rumor into community care. That thinness that might come for some of us on Wednesday night in the 84th minute of the church council meeting talking about a ministry plan. That thinness that might come when one of our small groups is just checking in with each other and it grows into a, a, an energy, an idea. God, cosmos, sacred energy, karma, you've got our attention. And now we are trying to believe you will be revealing the next good thing in the love waves of the trees, in the stories of the Afghan humanitarian parolees coming to our country, in the thump of rain and the thunderstorm, in the longing of our young people in trouble with the law. The times are urgent. Let us slow down. Amen. We hear now from Larry and Diane, a song that Larry wrote. It's Labor Day weekend. So this is a song about labor. And coming home. It's a sweltering day with a crop to pick Bending since morning like a crooked stick 
roads go forever, no end in sight. I just want to make it to the cool of the night. Till the day that the field lies sallow in the rain. And the plow is resting in its shed. We must toil in the bright, blinding rays of the sun. Come along, come along home. When the When the day is done, I will rest my eyes. Sunrise breaks on clear blue skies. I look to the heavens for the rain to come. To grant relief from this burning sun. Till the day that the field lies fallow in the rain. And the plow is rusting in its shed. We must toil in the bright, blinding rays of the sun. Come along, come along home. I will rise with the sun to face the day. It looks like the clouds are blowing away. Thunder and lightning, but no rain comes. Hope is in the marrow of these weary bones. Hope is in the marrow of these weary bones. Till the day that the field lies fallow in the rain. And the plow is resting in its shed. We must toil in the bright, blinding rays of the sun. Come along, come along, come along, come along, come along. Come along. Oh. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Your generosity bends the gyre toward goodness, bends us out of entrapment and despair. So we thank you. Your generosity of prayer and presence and phone calls and notes and checks in the mail or online giving or participation in a team or a committee or a, a small group or a singing ensemble. All of it, all of it joins together in a web of possibility to keep us moving forward with a new imagination that God is still at work with us for a just peace. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of the ways that you participate in it. Just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, we'll, we'll stay on those who can for a, a half hour virtual coffee hour uh, before our 11 o'clock uh, education hour for Bible study and the drawdown class. Hope you can join one of those after our uh, virtual coffee hour. I mentioned uh, that uh, we're looking for folks who are experiencing the earth exam and to share briefly in worship on the 19th or the 26th. Next Sunday will be strictly, uh, once again, a virtual worship service. And then 
we're evaluating wh where we go from here after next Sunday. Uh, we are still, we've extended the deadline for the fall, Forsyth Falls Community Supported Agriculture Shares. Uh, if you know somebody, if you yourself would be willing to participate in some way, it's to support black local farmers uh, and uh, let us know of your interest. Beautiful faces representing complex and hopeful, although also grieving humans. Make up uh, quite a remarkable quilt of witness in this digital format. Thanks for your presence with us for your voice, for your feeling and thinking and being. May you go forth and adjust peace this week in the name of the creator, sustainer, and redeemer.